Have you ever thought about how you would handle giant data moves? Not just talking about dragging a couple hundred gigs between two folders or doing a CP on in Linux between two folders. I'm talking about dozens or hundreds of terabytes. You see what's going on on the screen right now? Let's go talk about it. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today. We're doing some data moves. We are moving my data around because I'm happy to announce Data Center Dudes. Data Center is complete. It's up and running, it's operational. It's taken a couple of months to get the servers, to get the storage up and running, to get everything cabled up. And I, don't worry, I'm gonna be doing a complete guided tour through the whole setup, including the storage array and the virtual environment that I'm using, plus everything that's in the rack, how it's all cabled, networking configuration, all that stuff in the coming months is gonna be uh, out there for you guys. Now that it's up and running, we're gonna start doing some cool stuff with NetApp. Right? We're going to start showing you how to move your data around, how to protect your data, how to connect it to the cloud, how to make sure that you have availability of the data in the cloud, and vice versa. All of that stuff is coming. So make sure you're subscribed here to the channel, have your notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of it. Today, though, today, one of the final steps, now that it's up and operational, was to move and consolidate all of my various consumer NAS, we'll, we'll leave it at that, uh, various shares that I had for both Linux and uh, uh, SMB in Windows, and I consolidate all of that together. I had uh, several different vendors out there, uh, their products hosting some data for various reasons. Today, we consolidate all of it onto the new C250. C250? Yes. I uh, threw some clandestine efforts uh, at, at, at late, late into the night. Uh, the A250 slash Fast 500F that you guys saw me unbox last year has been swapped out for a brand new C250. And I can't wait to show you guys all about it in another video. We're going to walk through all this stuff today. Today we're talking about moving data. Now, you may have seen my CloudSync video from last year where I talked about how if you're connected, you could not even have to have a middleman in like a PC or laptop or anything like that or a server uh, to do that stuff. You could simply use our managed service to go up to uh, in Blue XP, create a sync relationship, and it will deploy data brokers, right? You guys remember that video because you all watched it, right? Right, I thought so. Um, but if we jump over here to and look at what I've got going on here, this looks a little bit different. So this is a product known as XCP. And let me just minimize this so you guys can see what's going on over here. So, uh, let me, what did I, could I went to the docs first. There we go. XCP, xcp.netapp.com. I'll put the link, all links to all this stuff I'm about to mention in the description for you guys. So you have a full index of everything we're going to go over. Cause while there's a lot, it's not that difficult. It's actually really easy. The very first thing you need to do, if you're an existing NetApp customer, just log in with your existing NSS account, download it and generate a license file. Yes, you have to have a generated license file uh, because it's just required to activate the software. Now, this was born out of our professional services arm at, because a lot of the work that we do at NetApp is migrating people from old third-party gear to NetApp stuff. Or sometimes we do in-place migrations from NetApps to NetApps. And one of the things that uh, we've always heard a big outcry for is moving large data sets needs to get easier. And we've made that easy. Uh, as of today, NetApp X, uh, XCP 1.9.1 is available. Uh, you can go and download this for free. Anybody. You don't even have to be a customer. Anybody can go download this and play with it. Uh, it comes with a free file analytics tool that operates in a web GUI. That's optional. You don't have to have it. Um, mostly, it just comes in a command line package. You download a zip file. And I'll show you guys here real quick that if I just go to... Look at this, uh, it unzips the file structure it perfectly for you. You don't even have to do anything, right? So what you're looking at here is sort of a base set of files. Um, obviously, XCP is your kind of main command. So if we just type XCP, wait, oh, I gotta go to Windows because I'm on Windows, right? This runs on Windows or Linux, guys, just, uh, just to be clear. So I can go in and look at this and see uh, all of the options that I have. And I'm gonna go over how to do this with you guys here just real quick. Um, this is gonna be a quick video today because I mean, there's, there's really not that much to show. I mean, other than me kind of showing off like the 
the, the move that I have going on right now, moving about 50 terabytes around. Like, we're 24 hours in, literally. Oh, we just hit one day. You guys saw it tick over live here in the video. Uh, 27 terabytes in 24 hours we've moved. So a little over a terabyte an hour. Not bad, considering the source is 7200 RPM consumer drives. All right? So keep all of that in context. If you're doing this from like a flash array to a flash array, uh, or an all-flash system to an all-flash system, then, yeah, you're going to have a much better time uh, doing this. You can even see... Uh, some of my throughput over here, if I make myself a little smaller, I'll put myself up in the corner. And you can see that I'm, I've got some decent latency. I mean, the, the NetApp's not even sneezing at this, guys. The, it's it's Because this is a C250, as you can see here on the screen. Uh, I'm, I'm getting all kinds of throughput. What I'm, what I'm really proud of is that we've gotten a level of throughput that's sustained. If we look at this on a... Instead, if we look at the, the day, so we just hit the one day mark. If we refresh it... Look at the IOPS, look at the throughput. It's held steady at about 350 to 400 megabytes per second. Um, you can see the latency is pretty flat. Um, we get a one spike of IOPS, probably because we hit a bunch of small files and it was, it was churning really hard. Right, so back to XCP. Um, it's a simple setup, right? You download the zip file, you register for your license, you download that license file into, um, let me go back to the main directory here. You download that license file into the root directory that it establishes, which is uh, on your C... It'll, when you unzip it, it'll put it here natively. NetApp folder and XCP. And then you just run XCP activate, right? The option we saw up here, right? And this is how you activate your license. That's it. It turns it on, and then whenever you type XCP, you're going to see it spam right here. So here's my license that I generated myself. So easy peasy. All you got to do is do that. And then when you look at the syntax, you're going to do, um, think about it like this. When you're doing big data moves like this, it's not something that's going to take five minutes. It's not something that's going to be non-disruptive to your end users or to your workloads and applications. So what it does first is you do an XCP sync source and destination. Let me pull this back up one more time. So we, I got to go back into the Windows folder. Sorry. CD Windows XCP. There we go. So you do XCP sync source UNC path destinations UNC path. That's for SMB. If you do NFS, you need your server colon slash full path, right? Or you simply do, uh, the, your, it's basically sync source destination. All the paths or all the commands are command source destination. There are additional attributes in the documentation that I'm going to link down below that you can use to like preserve ACLs, preserve timestamps, all of that kind of stuff that you would typically do when you're moving large unstructured windows and, and um, NFS data sets around. You want some of that stuff maintained. For me personally, I didn't, I didn't use that. I don't care. Most of this stuff is just old archive stuff anyway. Uh, I want to see how this goes. The beauty of it is it's not destructive. It's not deleting anything. So if I want to do it again, I can do it again. We, I want to see how this turns out on the other side of things, uh, but I can tell you that it's running really well. Uh, it uses uh, a middleman, an intermediary, as a piece, like a PC or a laptop or something like that, or a server, if you want to do it on a server. So you will need some resources. And just to show you real quick uh, the performance that I have going, I have a pretty big, beefy PC right now. So this is a 11900K, a Core i9. It's got a lot of CPU available. I got 64 gigs of RAM in here. It's currently using about 20, but I'm also recording video, so who knows how much of that is that. I've also got 1 gig and 10 gig in this PC. So I got a lot of horsepower in this rig. It's perfect for a middleman for something like this, especially on locally on the network, right? So the workflow process is sync, copy, verify. Uh, what is it? Yeah. No, scan. I'm so sorry. Scan, copy, verify sync or you can even do the sync and verify in, in another order if you want to my point is is that this gives you when you do the initial scan it creates an index and a log of all of the things that are in your source destination right so if you type scan and then the unc path you'll see it just flood the command prompt it'll literally go through and create a sort of metadata index in a log file to keep track of these are all the things that are going to be your source from this point forward now, if things change before you do your copy, you're going to want to make sure that you do the scan over again to update that. Or it'll pick up on that when you do the sync at the end. 
So once you do your scan, your initial one, then you're going to do your baseline copy. Depending on the size of your data, depending on the size of your pipe, that will determine how long that's going to take. Because I'm doing it over 10 gig, and because I'm also kind of hitting uh, some thrashing 7200 RPM drives, it's probably not performing the best it could be. But let me show you what's going on over here, because this is where things get really fun. The reason I'm recommending using XCP is because it scales out natively, under the covers, without you even really knowing it. That's one of the beauties of it. So it's, it parallelizes the move operation to be able to have more throughput based on the amount of throughput that it measures, based on the amount of horsepower that your system has. It'll do this automatically and dynamically based on the amount of resources it has at its disposal. Now, it won't completely cripple the system that you're running on. It's not going to max everything to 100%, but it's going <clears> to <throat> but it's going to use a lot. So make sure that you have a beefy system intermediary to, to orchestrate this on. Because you can see I'm running, I don't even know how many, what is that? 20, 20, probably 20 total XCP instances plus the two other processing uh, sessions going on. So that's it in an overview, guys. This is going to be a short video today because I want you guys to go and try this. Uh, the documentation is out there. Um, you can go to docs.netapp.com or I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys. You can find all of the variables, how to set it, how to install it how to configure it, how to plan your data migration. This is very, very important. You can do shows and scans to see it all. The beauty of this also, if I go back to the command prompt, is that there is another script in here. Uh, if I go back one folder to uh, look what was in there, you'll see a configure.sh shell script in here. Now this is for Linux only, but it allows you to stand up a small local web server to uh, for XCP to send analytics back to and give you a sort of live dashboard tracking the data move. This, it's fantastic, guys. And you can run multiple ones of these in parallel. And the last thing I'll show you real quick is there is another version of this out there that we lovingly call Exception that was put together by um, Hey Marco. And it's basically XCP on steroids. It takes XCP, containerizes it, and puts it into be able to scale out multiple multiple instances of it at the same time. So you're nesting uh, further. And so if I'm running 20 processes on my PC here, imagine running 20 containers of 20 processes. Like you can see where this scales out. So when you get into petabyte scale and you don't want it to take three months to move, let's say you need to move a petabyte in a week. You're going to need a lot of VMs to be those orchestrator middlemans. Um, and you can totally set all of that stuff up and and basically orchestrate it to be automated. So using pet things like Power CLI to stand up the VMs uh, and then or orchestrate it by triggering XCP. Or if you want to use um, um, Hames um, uh, exception here, you can use that as well. But yeah, guys, uh, thanks for checking this out. I'm really excited about the data move. This was kind of the last step to get everything going. Um, uh, now, once I get all of the data copied, I can start standing down some of the stuff that's in the rack uh, for the time being, and we can start getting things more scalable, and it's just going to go further and further from here. So at the end of the day, uh, XCP. XCP is what you want to use for any anything that's over, like, hell, 50 gigs. Like, use XCP because it's going to take some time. You're likely to change some data in that time frame. Just use it to be safe. It doesn't matter what size it is, and it's a free tool. It's a free tool. So stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed here because the next video is going to be a full tour, grand tour, step by step of the whole rack over there, what I ended up doing, um, the walkthrough of the storage array configuration and how that got laid out. There were some things that I found and some hurdles that I hit. If you guys are in Discord, you probably saw my thread uh, about that. Uh, and I'm going to walk through all of the setup of v vSphere 7 that I've decided to use, uh, mostly for compatibility reasons, um, but mostly to walk through how I did the distributed switch, uh, how I laid out the data stores, uh, all, the cluster configuration, the networking, all of that stuff. But until then, take care.